Hi, you guys. So, um, there's something that I wanted to actually, like, talk to you guys about today. And, um, it's big for me. It's really big because I've been really, like, seeking after God's heart. Like, seeking. Like, I want to know, like, how God feels feels like you know I can only feel it so much because you know I'm only dealing with a certain amount of people but uh you know God feels it on a huge level like I said before like you look at people like Hosea and you know God told him to go um, marry a prostitute you know and he could only feel the cares of the world with one person and how bad it hurt with one person you know um because, you know, it's it's kind of like God. He's trying to love the world. You know, it represents how God was trying to love Israel and they were trying to uh, turn his back on him all the time. But, it, you know, it, it's, it's just like a symbolization of how God is with the world and how the world keeps um, turning his back on them. But he keeps waiting. Now, this is really what God has really uh, taught me. Um, like I said before, before I really was having a hard time because I had a hard time trying to love people. Uh, not because I didn't want to love people. It was because, you know, I always had a fear about love. Love has always been my greatest fear. Now, the Bible says that there's no fear in love because perfect love casts out fear. You know, um, you can look at 1 John 4, 18, I believe that scripture is. I'll post it down here. But... The thing is, is what I've really been learning is, you know, no matter how far we go or how far we turn from God, he waits. That's love. He waits. Like, he waits. Like, I've, you know, I've been going through some things in my life where God has really, like, been teaching me how to love. Like, literally, hardcore down love through the good, through the bad, like, love like through it all you still have to keep loving you can't just stop loving because it gets hard you can't just stop you have to love through ups through downs through whatever circumstances even when things get rough in your own life you have to keep loving like it's serious like god's love is serious because even when we're going through like we looked at like um when you look at like where this is the story i think it's john 11 talking about lazarus when lazarus dies it says jesus came and he wept like that's a hard time but jesus still loved through the hard times like no matter what circumstance it was in life like you know whatever circumstance it was god still loved jesus still loved like they still love through it all you know even when you want to be mad because people are acting up or not doing right you still have to love them and it's just it's it's dedication like it's real pure love like i can only imagine me being in the world and others just wanting to give up on me and just waiting you know like i have a situation in my life where you know god just like Look, no matter what happens, you just need to wait and be dedicated because, you know, you really love this person. And you really care about them. So wait. So that's what I do. I wait just like God will wait because, you know, I, I really ask God, you know, God, show me how to love. Show me how to love, you know. And the one thing that we know about God, the Bible says that God will never leave us nor forsake us. No matter what the situation is in our sin, through it all, through it all, he waits. He waits. He's still there for us. He still cares for us. He still loves us. He waits. Like, you know, there's 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 not a day. Like, I go to church every Sunday, every Wednesday. You can get an invitation any day of the week. You can give your life to God. Like, any day of the week, you can come back. You look at the story of the prodigal son with the prodigal son. Like, this man didn't know when his son was going to come back. He didn't know when his son come back. But his son come back any day. He let, you know, it's like, you know, it talks about how, I believe it talks about how the man left you know, the light on, waiting for the product, like, you, you leave the light on, waiting for the prodigal son, waiting for him to come home, you know, like, you, you just, you just wait, you just wait for them to come home, hoping that they'll return, hoping that they'll come home, you just wait, you just wait, you know, and, and that's what God does for us, he waits for us 
to come back, you know. And I find it like odd and strange for humans how we can't wait on God, but God waits on us a whole lot. He just waits and he waits and he waits and he waits and he waits. And, he waits. and then God tells us to wait and we're like, God, wait for what? For what? When God waits. And waiting requires a lot of patience, but imagine how much patience God has because he waits a lot. And um, my my real big challenge for you guys is I really want to make it to this sort of challenge because not only just a challenge, but like this is a real serious challenge. You know you have someone in your life, you know, that you really care about, who you love. You know, my challenge is to you, if you have not, told them about Christ, you need to tell them about Christ soon. Uh, tomorrow's never promised. And when you really love somebody, you tell them about Jesus. You tell them about Jesus. And then sometimes it's very hard because, you know, uh, they think because they're close to you that they're exempt, but they need to know. Um, just because they're close to you doesn't mean anything because some people who are close to you will sit there on judgment day and they will go to hell because you never told them about Christ. It is very serious. And when you love somebody, you tell them about Christ, no matter how hard it is. You know, I've, I've had people who I really love and care about turn their back on me because I've had to tell them, look, you know, you know, I, I, you know, you pity a patty around it. You kid and joke with them. You love them and all this stuff. But look, if you die tomorrow, you I mean, you don't have to be as blunt, but like, it's true. If they died tomorrow and they did not know Jesus Christ, they would go to hell. And that is reality. You do not want to stand there on judgment day watching your friend go to hell. It is not fun. It's a real place. You know Jesus. The time is today. You do not want to sit there and them ask you, why didn't you tell me about Christ? There's a um, there's another story in the Bible about the rich man, the rich man, and um, uh, a man I believe was a poor man. His name was Lazarus, I believe, that he sat outside the gate of the rich man's house, and the and the rich man uh, he went to he went to he went to hell, and he asked if he could go back and get a second chance to tell his family not to come to this place. Hell is a real place, and you don't want your family or those around you to go to that place. So today is the day to tell them about Jesus. Do not wait for tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised nor guaranteed. Uh, it is serious. When you love somebody, you will do that. Um, you know, we, we, we often compromise because it's okay to compromise about God. Uh, you know, we think, but it's not. It, you know, someone, someone's soul is at stake here when we compromise. Someone's soul, you know, it, it's, it's not right. Because when they go to hell, then it looks bad on you. We don't understand all the actions that we make. It affects somebody in some kind of way. It affects somebody in some type of way. Look at Eve, even the garden. All, all she did was she... She she took a bite of the fruit and then she gave it to her husband. She gave it to her husband. And what happened? Then they fell into sin. And then they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And sin has filled this world for generations and generations and generations to come. Jesus had to come just because of her one choice. Choices are very huge in life. You know, I wrote a poem. Um talking about Eve's regret and um it, you know it it is it, difficult you know we we want to do the right things and we want you know uh to live for 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 Christ you know but we're not it, once we have Christ we're not the only ones who need it we need to be out there spreading that gospel Jesus could come back any day any day are we out there spreading the gospel are we out there telling people about Jesus actually um I'm going to actually read this this poem to you. It's called Eve's Regrets. It says, God, I want to love again. Not no superficial surface love, but a deep-rooted love that fills you. Like the aroma of a warm home-cooked meal. I want to take a grasp of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and tell Satan he can keep his ruin. 
Help me to understand how the concept of the equation of how 1 plus 1 equals 1 put me back into his rib cage because now he's more vulnerable. And somehow I can't help but get the strange feeling that it's my fault. Leaving man's heart so wide open for destruction, never ha would I have wanted to know sin. If only I would have known what I know now, this vicious cycle of how blind worldly love can be, all from playing with snakes in the garden. I should have known if you play with snakes, you will get bit. Guess the joke's on me. The venom of iniquity filled my flesh, and I took the world down with me. Now sin will be passed down the bloodline, making this sinful nature hereditary. So afraid to love because I was no longer... Cause I, because I no longer knew how to face you. Our level of intimacy faded, now covered with shame. So I hid, no longer able to embrace you. Because I feel so bare, caught up in an affair, like I was entangled in the sheets with the enemy. I didn't expect to be kicked out of our dwelling place. Like feuding lovers, you put me on the couch, made up of disgrace. Lord, I want to come home, feeling so far from you. They say that you reap what you sow. Now some of my future seeds will lose their soul. So Lord, make an escape to bring, to help bring them close to you. All because of my mistake. See, hell is real. And, um, and, and Jesus loves all of us. And, and I, I, you know, I really challenge you because it hurts. It really hurts. You know, before, when I was younger, I, I used to have an issue with uh, people uh, leaving me. I felt that people always leave me. Uh, but now, uh, you know, I, God has been really working on me with that because you know what? When you tell the world, when you tell the world about Christ, sometimes the world will leave you. Uh, majority of the time, the world will leave you unless uh, someone from the world really wants Christ. Uh, they'll 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 come and and they'll get the information that they need. They'll, if they're hungering for it, they'll come to you because they want they want Christ. But God is rejected by the world every day, but He still waits. Are we? Are we, you know, are we giving people Christ and when they reject us, are we taking them back with mercy? Like God takes us back with mercy uh, when when they come back and loving them and then, you know, and doing what Christ would want us to do. Or are we rejecting them, sending them back out into the world? Are we telling them, you know, sometimes the world, when, when they hear that they that Christ died for their sins, that, you know, that they'd have to, you know, surrender their life to God. It's a beautiful thing to surrender your life to God. It's not a bad thing. But they will, they will relieve us and they will reject us. And we have to take them back with love and mercy and kindness. We can't reject them. When, when, when God takes us back, he doesn't reject us. He accepts us because he's been waiting with, for us with mercy and grace and understanding. And he's willing to take us back. And we have to look at the prodigal son. The father had mercy on his son. He loved his son. He made a feast for his son, though his son went out into the world because he loved his son. He rejoiced over his son because his son was lost, but now he's found. So we need to do this because it's serious. These are people's souls. So my challenge to you guys all, tell someone about Jesus, someone close to you about Jesus. Tomorrow's never promised. And I, and I pray that someone close to you who is in your heart, very close to you, that, that you... um. You tell them about Jesus. See, Eve, <laughs> see, in my poem, Eve had to ask Jesus to make an escape. In the Bible, God already had an escape. He told Eve as soon as she sinned uh, that, you know, women would be cursed with all these things. And, and, and but he, you know, but he said there, the you know, someone would be bru there would be a bruising at the heel. And, and, and that was, that was Jesus at the, in the cross. That was Jesus in the cross. Um, if I can find the scripture for you guys real fast, if I can find the scripture, uh, for you guys. And then it says, and the Lord said to God unto the serpent, because thou hast done and thou art cursed above all the cattle and above the beasts of the field and upon the belly shall go in the dust. And it says, Right here it says, and I will put an em enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise 
his heel. That's in Genesis 3, verse 14 and 7. Uh, for, uh, verse, Genesis 3, verse 14 through 15. It is talking about how right here, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. They're talking about Jesus. See, Jesus had to be the escape for the sins of this world. Uh, we, we need to make sure that we're telling people about Jesus. Hell is real. God had to make an escape for, for these choices. And uh, we need to tell people because we, we want them to enter the kingdom of heaven. I love you guys so much. And I, and I pray and, I, and I, I hope this really reaches out to you guys and blesses your heart. Because my, my heart aches. It really, it really aches uh, for the people who are dying and on their way to hell. And um, I love you guys so much. God bless. Peace.